Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, many of you know me, and many of you know I usually go off the cuff, uh, but I'm going to uh, read a lot of a prepared statement, then I'll take any and all questions after that, so bear with me a little bit. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming today, and I believe by the calendar it was 361 days uh, since we last met on this subject. Um, I want to talk first about the time frame um, with Coach Weir as I know it. Uh, you know, I received a phone call at approximately 4 o'clock on Friday from a representative from the UNM Athletic Department expressing uh, interest uh, as a courtesy call uh, regarding Coach Weir. Uh, on Saturday, I was made aware that he was going to fly to interview for the job in Las Vegas. Uh, and then on Sunday and Monday, uh, we had uh, many conversations back and forth, he and I. Uh, and I believe it was about 6.45 a.m. on Tuesday um, when I got the official word that he accepted the position. Okay. So while being professionally disappointed, um, in losing a great coach. Uh, I'm also personally disappointed for losing a really good friend. Uh, I don't, I think in those 361 days, Paul and I maybe spoke every single day, except if one of us were on vacation. Uh, I certainly want to thank him for his 10 years of dedicated service to New Mexico State University. Uh, he worked tirelessly as an assistant and he produced one of the most successful years in the history of Aggie basketball. As a friend, I wish him well all but two days of the year. As I said, this is the business side of intercollegiate athletics. Okay, on Tuesday at 8 a.m., to go further with the time frame, Paul and I met with the team. He addressed the team first, uh, then I addressed them as a group uh, after Paul had left. Um, and then immediately after that, I went up and I met with uh, the entire staff. Uh, and then I met with uh, all of our full-time assistant coaches individually. Okay. So that's a little bit of the time frame. Uh, talk a little bit about the process. Uh, first off, we do not have, we do not have a time frame, uh, but we will move very quickly uh, to fill a position. We'll use a small committee like we did last time. I've usually done that on big hires with a blend of community people and campus people, uh, representatives. Uh, we'll uh, conduct the search in-house again, meaning we will not use a search firm. Um, and we have, I have, looked at virtually every bio of every coach out there in the country. Um, we uh, will whittle that down to a very manageable number, and through that we will select a group of our finalists uh, to interview with the committee. Uh, after uh, I receive the committee's feedback, uh, I'll make the final decision and present the candidate to the chancellor for his ultimate approval. Okay? That's a little bit about the process. I'll talk a little bit about the qualities. There's 11 of them, so bear with me. Uh, the ability to recruit quality, character, and talent that fits his staff style. Uh, focus on the importance of academics. Have a tremendous work ethic. A huge desire to win. To be positive with the team. Will hire a staff that will complement his weaknesses. Communicates well and directly with the team. Ability to mentor individuals on and off the court. Somebody that will instill toughness. Someone who wants to be at New Mexico State University. And someone who understands the role of head basketball coach in the public and representing the program and the department, not only in the community, but statewide. Now, this is the third men's basketball coach that I've done in my tenure. Uh, and doing one just one year ago, uh, I think gives us some advantages and certainly allows us uh, as uh, Bron Cartwright, our deputy AD, and I were talking last night uh, to be well ahead of the curve of where we were last year at this time. Um, talk a little bit about the timing of the search. Uh, I think, I believe, you'll tell me if I'm wrong, this is the last basketball head job that's open in the country. Um, uh, that gives us a, a very unique situation with regard to the landscape and possible candidates uh, in the country. Uh, I will tell you we have received an avalanche of interest from all across the coaching spectrum. <laughs> Emails, telephone calls, text messages, friends I haven't heard of for 25 years, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, I wanted to talk a little bit about finances because I know it's a hot topic with a lot of people um, because I read whatever Jason Groves writes, so I know that's a hot topic. Um, I want Aggie fans to know this, okay? This is what we are dealing with, okay? Athletics 
at New Mexico State has a mandate to balance our budget each year from campus. Not an unreasonable request. Um, and we have done that in my two full years here, okay? Athletics also has a debt which has been mandated to pay back. At one point, this debt was $10 million, and now it's down to approximately $4.3 million. This fiscal year, we made a payment of $1.35 million to that debt, okay? The remaining annual payments are as follows, $890,000 next fiscal year, $970,000 the year after that, $1.63 million the year after that, and the last year, $487,000. Then that existing debt will be paid off. But I'll remind everybody, we are mandated to pay that back. Now, while we could bemoan what others have or what others are able to do financially, uh, to me, that is a tremendous waste of energy. You know, what athletics can control is doing our best to find the best coach to fit in our financial means. Okay? Now, let me talk about our program a little bit. And let me remind Aggie Nation why this is a great job. Because sometimes I think they forget. We've got a final four in our history. All right, a Hall of Fame coach in Lou Henson. NCAA appearances in five of the last six seasons. A Western Athletic Conference regular season or tournament championship for six consecutive seasons. Three honorable mention AP All-Americans in the last three seasons. A first round draft pick in the NBA. And we're coming off a 28 win season and have an RPI of 56. Now we have an unbelievably desirable job and now is the time to select a coach who's the best fit for us within our means. <clears throat> okay, I'm sorry to be so long, but I wanted to get that all out. Uh, at this point in time, I will be happy to answer any and all questions. Uh, Mark Rudy, Las Cruces Sun News. Mario, obviously there's a little bit of a question about the Paul buyout. To your understanding, what is his buyout um, from his contract here? Okay, the question, uh, and I'm going to repeat these questions without a mic. Uh, about uh, Coach Weir's buyout and what my thoughts are on that. Uh, Mark, as you know, I am no lawyer, okay? Uh, but it is my understanding that the buyout is $500,000 um, when Coach Weir isn't the coach here any longer. Um, I know that the, the, the contract is with Paul Weir uh, and the university, and Paul and I have talked about this numerous times. Um, so we are aware of that, but our university, general counsel, and others will be pursuing that. I guess a follow-up to that, is there a timetable, do you know, for that, or? Um, you know, we just had the press conference yesterday up there, so um, I would anticipate uh, it's a pretty hot topic, so it's at the top of mind uh, to a lot of folks on campus, um, so I would assume that the wheels would be in motion, um, you know, very quickly, quite frankly, my focus is not on that. My focus is hiring a basketball coach. That, in my mind, is now a legal matter. Uh, and Lord knows I do not say that in an aggressive way. I'm just saying I think the, the legal side of it will, 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 uh, you know, will take place on that. Um, Marvin and Jason with us on news. Marvin and Paul have gone on to, to, back, to jobs in the Mountain West. Um, obviously, New Mexico State it served as a sort of a springboard. Are, are you are you accepting of that, or is there more that you can do, and the university can do to keep coaches here in the future? Yeah, I'm accepting of the fact that we won 28 games. I'm accepting of the fact that we went to Arizona State and won against a Power Five school. You know, I'm accepting of the fact that we had a 56 RPI. Um, we are where we are with our finances. When we have coaches that do tremendous things they're going to have opportunities to go to uh, institutions that can pay a tremendous amount of money. I would never bemoan a coach to turn down money that takes care of his family or, you know, his children or what have you. That is the nature of the business. A um, little awkward that it's uh, to our state school, but I think that's the elephant in the room. But um, I would turn your question around a little bit different that I'm not um, accepting that this is a springboard, 
I just know that even when coaches do tremendous things at other places, they end up at national powers like a UCLA or a Kentucky or what have you. So, um, you know, virtually no place is poachless. Uh, even when Butler goes to two, you know, consecutive Final Fours, they lose their coach to the Boston Celtics. Is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars the ceiling then for this for this job? In in the way that finances are structured right now. Yeah, it's certainly in the range. Okay. And you're getting pretty close to the ceiling. But, um, you know, I think the institution is going to maintain some flexibility uh, depending on the candidates. But uh, certainly, uh, in my mind, I'm, off, I'm operating under the framework of the contract that Paul Weir was under, you know, last year. Ernesto Garcia, MSU of Allen News. Um, since the timeline that you expressed and you put the time in and after the announcement that Paul was going to go at around 645, have you been in touch with Chancellor Carruthers, had the chance to talk to some of the higher-ups to let them know what is happening and what your process might be? Yeah, the question is, you know, have I been in touch with the Chancellor and, and uh, the process uh, going forward? Uh, yes, the Chancellor and I have spoken throughout the whole process. Uh, obviously, as my direct report, I have let him know every step of the way when there's a new development. Uh, we certainly talked very early on Tuesday morning, um, and then uh, just yesterday I sat with him, as I did a year ago, and kind of explained um, more or less the whole process we would like to um, produce going forward. Andy Morgan, News Channel 9. Um, you kind of listed the, the criteria that you want to see in the next head coach. Is there, does all that criteria need to be met? Is there one kind of more prudent than and maybe the other? Uh, you know, it's, it's not a game show. You know, it's not like, well, hey, you got seven out of the eight or seven out of the 11 and, and you're the winner. Um, certainly we're looking for themes. You know, it, it is important. As I get older, I understand that fit becomes more and more important to the institution. And this is a unique institution like every institution is. You know, Mizzou was a unique place where I was at. Southern Illinois was very unique. This is a unique place. Uh, has unique opportunities, has unique challenges, and you're really trying to find somebody who's successful, um, who wants to be here, and you know hits those things. That's important to me. Is Jesse Bob obviously getting a lot of support from from the players, kind of like Paul did uh, this time last year? Is, is he a guy that um, you guys are looking at? And obviously, uh, with Paul going to UNM, is it kind of speed up that process knowing that he might take him with him to UNM. Sure. The question is, uh, Jesse Bopp, our current associate head coach, having support of the players and what his status is going forward. Um, you know, last year it was kind of unique. It was not a surprise or not a secret that the players uh, supported uh, Paul Weir tremendously. And that's great. And I got the players' feedback. I think it's critically important that immediately you sit down with the players and you have a conversation with them. That way you can have, whether they agree with you or not, you're sitting right in front of them. I also told them my door's open uh, for them 24-7. Here's my cell number. Um, when you are successful and win 28 games and go to the NCAA tournament, um, I think you would be foolish <laughs> if you didn't look at um, the pieces that help you get there. You know, it wasn't just Paul Weir and nobody else. Um, so much like I said a year ago, um, Jesse Bopp will certainly, you know, receive consideration. Um, um, you know, not to get too deep in him, but he's obviously got a tremendous track record uh, with Billy Donovan and, and Chaka Smart, so certainly he will receive um, consideration. Uh, but much like Paul last year, um, just because he's the incumbent, I have certainly yet to make up my mind because we have yet to officially deep down kick off this process. I obviously have some people who I'm very interested in talking to you, but it's a wide open search. So Bob Gallagher, he has some strong words, uh, just placing blame on the NMSU Board of Regents, including President Gary Carruthers. What's kind of your response to what he said about that? You know, I was not an employee when uh, Mr. Gallagher uh, was, the, was the president of the board. Um, quite frankly, Luke, I would... Um, uh, the question was, by the way, my, my reaction to a former president of the Board of Regents' comments regarding our administration, um, I would respectfully um, like to say, you know, I can't be in control of others' comments. Um, and if I were to comment on what everybody commented on social media, we'd never have a basketball coach. So, you know, um, obviously I'm aware of them. Um, you know, I am a proud alum here. 
Uh, we do have challenges. You know, we have maybe more challenges now than we did a while ago. Uh, but at the same time, you know, this is going to push us to, to do everything we can to get a great basketball coach. How was the players' reaction from knowing what was happening? What did you get the most? Did you get any feedback from them off the bat or any discussion? Anyone want to talk to you? Sure. Yeah, how was the players' reaction is the question. You know, an emotional time. I mean, when you're a, a younger person and you get thrown for a loop, obviously, um, when Marvin was here for nine years, I think the sense of in, uh, inevitability that he's going to get something with Paul, I don't think it uh, creeped into his um, thought process uh, or their thought process that, you know, he would actually go. Um, so it was a little emotional, but, um, you know, I had asked them to place their trust in the athletic director. I had told them that some of the older guys it was easier to do than probably some of the younger players who don't know me as well. I reminded them that, you know, Ian Baker was one of the people who was nervous and, hey, do I, I don't know if I want to talk about a release or what have you. And at the end of this year, he's a third team All American. Uh, he's one of the greatest players in Aggie history, and he's going to go make a lot of money playing basketball and leave here with his degree kind of worked out for him. So I, I said, we're going to accelerate our process so you're not going to be waiting for days and weeks on end. Um, so that was a little bit of the, the tenor of the meeting. Uh, I know Jesse Bob's been brought up, but will the other members of the staff too, like Mark Shue and Eric Sanders, also be considered? Um... Will other members of the staff be considered? Uh, I brought that up in my one-on-one -on -one meetings with them. Uh, the individuals who expressed interest in being a uh, candidate being looked at for the job will be looked at as a candidate for the job. Eric O'Brien, CBS4. Uh, you talk about how it's not a game show, there's not seven out of eight criteria you have to meet, but for New Mexico State moving forward, what is your most important attribute in the coach that you seek, and do you have a list of maybe a top three that you know you're going to interview right off the bat? Uh, I'm not going to answer the second question. The question is, what is my most um, highest priority and a quality of coach, maybe, if I can characterize that. I'm doing that for the folks listening at home. And the second, you know, do I have a short list already? Um, the first one, it's kind of a conglomeration of things. We need toughness. This is who we are. As long as I have been associated with this in institution, when we've been successful, this is what we've produced. You know, I was here during the Neil McCarthy eras. I was friends with all those guys. Randy Brand was at my house on his recruiting visit when I was a baseball player. He, they were tough dudes. You know, that's what we need here. There's a lot of other things that we need. You know, we need a commitment to academics. We need, you know, somebody who knows X is no. We need tough dudes, okay? Um, certainly, I have an open mind. Uh, and yes, there are some people that have risen to the top of my thinking. But um, we're not putting the committee together for show. I do like to get other people's opinions, especially very successful people at the institution or um, um, in the community. So, you know, that's a discussion we're going to have very soon. And Mario, if I could just follow up with one more. Uh, given the day that it is in the early signing period, what do you expect from this recruiting class? It's obviously been talked about a lot with what Paul was bringing in. How much do you expect that that could shake up with the coaching change? Well, you know, um, I think Bron Cartwright's in the back of the room. You know, while I can't comment specifically on recruits, uh, obviously we have some recruits that are signed, you know, so um, what I told our players, uh, you know, I had our assistant coaches uh, tell our recruits, you know, I want them all to meet um, with the new head coach um, before, you know, any decisions are made of the recruits that we were recruiting but are unsigned. Um, you know, I would hope that we would stay on them, uh, but I do realize that, you know, anybody else could, is, 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 is legal to talk to them as well. Outside of finances, what, I mean, what kind of support do you think you need to, you would want to see from administration regarding athletics, like moving forward? Uh, the kind of support that I'd like to see from the administration moving forward, uh, Jason, I think any athletic director wants athletics to be the most important thing at the university, okay? Uh, also, many athletic directors know that this is not, athletics is not the most important thing, but it's the most visible. 
if you could turn around and look at yourselves, <laughs> there's a case in point that this is one of the most visible things. So I think, like anything, you want to try to control your own destiny when you know, we know that a magic wand isn't possible to make finances appear out of thin air, but you know, we would, um, we want control over things that impact the success of not just the men's basketball program, but all intercollegiate athletics. Um, and there's a lot of those things that I think me and a lot of our staff could say, hey, this is what we'd really like to have um, in order to maximize our success. Um, we can go over that laundry list at a different time, but sure. And I don't think that's any place different in the country. Um, but yes, I certainly would have a list of things um, I would like athletics to have that we currently don't that is outside of the realm of finances. And when I say I, I'm speaking for the head coaches. Do you think the Board of Regents and the President support those wishes? Uh, do I think the Regents and the Board of uh, um, uh, Regents support those wishes? Um, you know, I think that at the appropriate time, um, athletics, um, should put all those down on a list and try to formally present those to see what may be possible and what might not be possible. And then we would have a better understanding of, you know, how we can help all of our intercollegiate sports moving forward to the best of what I think the, what I think it could be. Um, Mario, obviously, um, you know, a year, you've, it's only been a year since you've had a coaching opening. Obviously, you've had some finalists from last year. Um, are any of those going to be considered right away or have reached out for you that were finalists for the position last year? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I think we did a great job last year. Obviously, you know, new, uh, the question was, uh, will the uh, finalists from last year uh, be uh, finalists again for this year? Um, the answer is yes. Uh, I think we did a great job. Those coaches are still great coaches. You know, one of the three is now a head coach at an institution, so he's uh, going to be out of the mix. Um, I, so at the present time, the answer would be yes. Um, you know, I'll consult our HR rules. I don't know if, I don't feel the need to immediately go out and re-interview them. You know, if we end up going in that direction, that might have to be, but, you know, we'll, we'll play that by ear. Is there an interim head coach right now for the time being? Uh, there will be. Obviously, Paul was the interim head coach this year. You know, it's, oh boy, what is it, about 28 hours. So, yeah, we'll be, we'll be naming someone shortly here. What is it? Uh, Derek was awesome in the roundup. You know, Aggie fans, I think their egos are a little bit bruised after, you know, Paul's departure to UNM. Does, will that play an influence in um, who you interview? Maybe will you try to maybe hire someone, a, a splashy guy, maybe someone who's been here before? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, uh, the question is, are Aggie fans egos bruised and will we try to do a splash hire? Uh, you know, I look at it that our coach did so well for the Aggies, he was made a multimillionaire. <laughs> if I'm an Aggie fan, I feel pretty good about that. We got a guy who he did so well, he's making millions of dollars to take care of his family. That's how I choose to look at it. I understand how people could say, oh, he's going to our rival. We feel hurt about that. I can't control what our rival pays and the stuff they have. So um, it's, uh, you know, in the eye of the beholder. You know, as far as making a splash hire, uh, I would say I want to make the right hire for this place. You know, Paul was a pretty big splash in the NCAA tournament at 28 and 5 and a 56 RPI. So I consider anybody who can do that a splash hire. But as far as um, just hiring for a name that will get everybody ginned up and that quote unquote win the press conference. Uh, I was never a belief. It's always nice, right? When you have that stuff and they back it up with 28 wins. Uh, but that is certainly uh, not in our forefront of our thinking to try to make a splash hire. We're going to try to make the right hire. What does this kind of do now for the rivalry in your opinion? I mean, already a heated rivalry, but now you have, now you have this situation. Yeah. Um, what, what will this do to the rivalry? Will it heat it up? I don't think there's a doubt about that. <laughs> um, I know our Cracker Jack marketing department was sending out uh, basketball renewals and put the UNM home game date on the renewal sheet. So I am guessing that uh, a lot of people will be very interested in that. Uh, but um, I will go back to my original comments. 
Uh, Paul was a friend of mine. He was our head coach, but we talked all the time. I want him to be successful. I don't want him to fail. I like him and I like his family. But two days out of the year, I want us to put the wood to him. Have any of the current players asked for their release at all? No, they have not. Have any current players asked for their release? The answer was no. Two more questions. I don't know if you addressed this earlier, but how surprised were you when you first talked to Paul when he said he was mentioning pursuing this job? How surprised were you, and was this something you potentially saw coming? or? Um, how surprised was I when Paul got the job, and was I, um, did I see this coming? Jason Grove saw this coming. He was beating me up over it every time I saw him in the baseball press box. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. Um, Paul won 28 games, and he's well-known in the state. Um, I wasn't overly surprised that they would look at a high-quality coach. Um, when I received the telephone call, my first call was to Paul, letting him know he was going to get a call. Um, so while I was hoping that wouldn't happen, um, I also knew that it was a realistic possibility, even though... Um, Maybe I didn't think it was that realistic of a possibility. Luke, tell me what your second question was again. I just said, did you, did you see this coming at all? Like yeah. After I, the tournament, all that success, were you thinking, oh, maybe this is something that could really happen? Or not? Well, you know, I, I mean, personally, I thought uh, we win a game in the tournament, there's a realistic chance of losing him. Um, but obviously, just getting there and having a great showing against Baylor, who I remind everybody was the number one team in the country, leading them at halftime. Uh, you know, having a 20-game win streak, beating Arizona State on their home floor by 16, um, you know, it was enough to get people's attention. Awesome. When you get that call, basically, you know, the courtesy call to ask for permission, I mean, is there any part of you that feels like it's a little bit of a slap in the face at all? No, not at all. Not at all. I, yeah, I mean, I, I do appreciate getting the calls. Um, I've had hires. Um, <clears throat> prominent hires, uh, football, at my other institution. Well, I never got a call. He just said, hey, I'm leaving on Tuesday, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I do appreciate getting a phone call. Um, you know, I was, this is not North Korea. <laughs> you know, people can get phone calls. People can go. Um, so, um, but it is, in my mind, um, professional when you get a call, at least. Professional courtesy. I can just ask one more. Um, sure. You go from the tournament and one of the best seasons in history to losing your head coach. Um, can you just give me an idea of the roller coaster right now for New Mexico State of how high you were feeling and how low it is now? That's the beauty of intercollegiate athletics. The question is the roller coaster. You know, I, I always said, and I have a lot of friends in the banking industry, so I hope none of them are listening, but I just chose to do something different. And this job has a lot of highs and lows. And there's a guy in the back of the room, Scott Schroeder at Samson Equipment, who lives every high and every low with me. But that's part of the job. And that's what makes intercollegiate athletics fun. It's like going to a movie. You don't know what the outcome is. Yeah, I would love to ride high 24-7 in my life and never have a low. But, you know, it does make those highs a little sweeter. When Marvin said he was going to leave, I don't know, who are we going to hire? And then I'm hugging Coach Weir on the floor after we're going to the NCAA tournament. You know, that's life. You know, that's what makes life worth living. So, um, yeah, that's it.